of forgiveness, a new and powerful way to look at forgiveness. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about a very practical and very valuable idea. This idea is tough forgiveness. Tough forgiveness is a new and interesting and different way to look at forgiveness. It brings another angle, it brings a, a different insight into forgiveness and how it works. So what is tough forgiveness? Tough forgiveness is when we negotiate around a reconciliation with the person we're forgiving. When we decide we're going to negotiate around a reconciliation, that means we have a certain amount of power and influence and control about how that reconciliation happens. It means we have a, a lot of say in how that reconciliation happens. And this is powerful. And the reason it's powerful is this. Many times when someone resists forgiving or they feel unable to forgive, it's because they've got issues or concerns around their reconciliation. They're maybe worried or frightened, well, if I reconcile with this person, they can just hurt me again or be in a position to damage me again and, and these type of things. So these kind of understandable reasons for being resistant to forgiving. But with tough forgiveness, when we bring that in and we feel like, oh, well, I'm not really sure I want to reconcile with this person or maybe I am willing to reconcile, but I want to put some conditions on it. That's when tough forgiveness really comes into its own and makes it much easier for us to forgive. It helps to understand tough forgiveness when we realize that we can unpack reconciliation from forgiveness. We can let the reconciliation part be something distinct in its own right. Then when we do that, and if we're defining reconciliation as what we intend to do or the process of creating a long-term relationship with someone, then it gives us a different insight into how forgiveness works. So with tough forgiveness, we're, as I said earlier, we're negotiating around the shape that the reconciliation is going to take. So if reconciliation is about the ongoing relationship, what is actually the other part of forgiveness? What is forgiveness itself then? And the definition I'm using is forgiveness is letting go of wanting to punish. It's simply letting go of any part within us that wants to punish the other person or to punish ourselves. It's any attachment to pain, if you like. Now, of course, there's a lot more to forgiveness than that. However, that's a very practical and useful definition that allows us to get our hands on forgiveness and be able to work with it rather than keeping it as some kind of abstract thing that's up in the high shelf and we can't really quite reach it. Now, it's important when we're working with forgiveness to do the actual forgiveness practice itself first before looking at the reconciliation. So we need to look at forgiveness first because we need to let go of wanting to punish someone before we can have any clear view about what really needs to happen about the reconciliation and what we really want to do there. If we haven't done any forgiveness work first, it can completely distort our perspective on reconciliation. For example, if we haven't done any work in letting go of wanting to punish someone for, for some harm we feel that they've caused us, then that's going to distort our perspective on reconciliation. It can work a couple of ways, this distortion. It can be that um, it distorts our perspective around entanglement. We can be wanting to reconcile with someone even though it's not really in our best interest out of a feeling of guilt. Well, the forgiveness will let, help us let go of the guilt that we won't feel entangled in that relationship. And similarly, we might resist reconciling with someone because we want vengeance. We want to punish them in some way. Even when it's in our own best interest to reconcile with them, we might be resisting it just to punish them. That's why it's really important to do the forgiveness work, to do the letting go of wanting to punish before we then look at what to do at reconciliation. And so an initial part of that is, do we actually want to reconcile with the person? In some circumstances, it might not be possible or desirable. They might be dead, so it's not possible to reconcile with them. Or it might be they're violent and we don't want to go anywhere near them, so we don't want a reconciliation. Or it might be they're a career criminal and you know we just can't really have a relationship with them because they steal everything they can get their hands on. Or it might be that they're abusive. Or it might be they're just not right for us to have a relationship with anymore. So there can be many reasons why we don't really want to have a reconciliation with someone. On the other hand, there's times when we might want to have a reconciliation with someone, but we're not sure about it. We might want to explore the possibility 
And that's where tough forgiveness really comes in, because then we can negotiate around it. It makes that condition that going to couples counselling together would be part of a reconciliation. We might decide that if the person has got serious issues around anger, that they do some anger management before we're willing to look at a reconciliation. So tough forgiveness opens the doors to those, this kind of negotiating around a reconciliation with someone. The other part of um, reconciliation is we might need to see that there's some genuine remorse in the person. One of the signs that somebody's feeling genuine remorse is when they show empathy for how we felt. For example, they might say, Oh, I'm really sorry I did that. You must have felt awful. So it's showing a genuine connection. But if they're just doing a knee jerk, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, um, out of fear that we're going to retaliate, there might not be any genuine remorse there. So it might not indicate they're going to change the behavior. We also need to remember that, um, that any kind of negotiation is a two-way process. It can't just be about us making demands on the other person. Though we do have the right to set clear boundaries, especially if someone's done harm to us. We need to show respect for their position also. It can help if we can express what we need in a, in a constructive way. It is better to ask for what you want rather than complain about not having it. In a negotiation around reconciliation, you, you need to be asking for what you want, not complaining about what you didn't get. So you need to be coming from a position of empowerment, not a position of, of lack and weakness. In any negotiation process like this, it would be so easy for toxic behavior to come in and in the form of being entangled in this messy relationship or vengeance sneaking in. So it's um, really, really important to do the forgiveness work first. Then you'll be much more able to reconcile in a healthy way. People often reconcile without having done any forgiveness work. I call this false forgiveness because they've gotten back together with the person. There's been no change in the attitudes or demeanor of each person, they just drifted back together. Neither of them have done any forgiveness work or any work in themselves at all. They're just going to cause the same or similar problems again. In some circumstances, the reconciliation may be partial. For example, we may be in a committed relationship with someone and then we go our separate ways, either through divorce or separation or whatever, and we become friends again. We don't get back into an intimate relationship again. We just stay somewhat on the friends level. But at least we can create an affable and mutually respectful relationship on that level. Sometimes we might decide that reconciliation is just not possible. There's an interesting example of this from my book, Forgiveness is Power. I'll put a link to the book in the description. Jean tries to avoid her mother as much as she can. She finds her mother's aggressively critical and judgmental attitude towards her hard to bear. Jean comments, People say to me that I should just tell my mother that I love her and then all will be well. Those who say that do not know my mother. She would just think I am weak and utterly despise me if I said that. Jean is a sensible and well-adjusted person. She probably knows what she's talking about and is showing wisdom and keeping herself out of harm's way. If there is a serious breakdown in an important relationship, then our challenge is to become reconciled with ourselves, but breaking off the relationship or minimizing contact. We may need to keep a distance with the occasional check-in from time to time to see if they've changed in any way. People have the right to stay stuck, and we have the right not to stick with them. Sometimes people with important roles in our lives are not willing to play out their role, at least not in the ways we need or expect. It is better to find other ways of having our needs met than waiting for these people to change. If they're not intending to change, we can be sure they won't. So is the person we're wanting to reconcile with, are they intending to change as an important part of whether reconciliation is possible or not? It can really help with reconciliation if you can try this. 
Are you able to tell someone how you feel without blaming them for how you feel? An important part of tough forgiveness is to realize that the other person is not the only person we need to reconcile with. We also need to be reconciled with ourselves and have a healthy relationship with ourselves. So we don't want to reconcile with someone else in a way that damages our relationship with ourselves. Part of this has to do with, are we actually really ready to forgive and reconcile with that person? Because perhaps we're not. Perhaps we're too bruised or too injured and we just need some time, some space to co collect ourselves and time for healing, time for contemplation. We just need some peace and quiet for a while to, to bring the different parts of us together again so we feel able to forgive and reconcile. If you can't forgive someone at any given time or you don't feel ready to reconcile with someone at any given time, then just forgive yourself then and reconcile with yourself and live your life as best you may in the moment. And work on forgiving and reconciling those things you can forgive and reconcile. Then maybe later you'll be able to handle the more challenging topics and the more challenging situations. So I hope you find the idea of tough forgiveness as useful as I do. I'd love to hear from you, so let me know how we go on with forgiveness. Thank you.